Hello and welcome to tonight's webinar on Growing Natives from Seed. My name is Courtney and I'm the Community Program Director here at MSHS and I'm excited to be joined tonight by my friend David Woods. David Woods is the Conservation Program Director for Urban Roots. He leads youth interns in conservation projects ranging from habitat restoration, rain gardens, and pollinator work to engage the community in our local parks. Welcome, David. Hello. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And we're also joined by Don Lamb from the community, Como Community Seed Library. Good evening, Hello. Don. Hello. This is the last event in our Minseed schedule for 2021. Um, this was a project that was started last year with Don Land from the Como Community Seed Library, Stephanie Hankerson from the St. Paul Seed Circle, and myself with the Minnesota State Horticulture Society. Uh, we've really been focusing on saving seeds from native plants this year, and that is in large thanks to, in, um, to a grant from the Capital Region Watershed District that has really powered this whole program this whole season. Can you go to the next slide, David? So we started the season with webinars on planning a garden with seed saving in mind. Um, and that webinar is actually now available in the webinar store at northerngardener.org. And then we moved on to webinars on identifying native plants using iNaturalist. And both of those uh, webinars are also available on the MinSeed program page on northerngardener.org. And then we did several seed collecting and processing events one of which David actually hosted at Urban Roots, which was super, super fun. Um, we all got to play with all kinds of toys for seed cleaning and processing. And uh, we had a virtual seed swap. And we uh, have applied for more funds to continue this work. So hopefully there will be more happening in 2022. Um, from there, I'm going to hand it over to David and I'll check back in later. All right, thanks, Courtney. Um, well, yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is David Woods, and today we're going to talk about growing native plants from seed. Um, so, a little <clears throat> background of me and kind of what I'm bringing to the table. Uh, I've been at Urban Roots for eight years, and we're a nonprofit based on the east side in St. Paul. And as Courtney mentioned, we uh, do youth employment and youth development and hire youth to work in uh, three programs that we have, a conservation program, a gardening program, and a cooking program. And I lead the conservation program. And we do a lot of habitat restoration work at parks in St. Paul. Um, and then we do just a lot of education with the youth, helping them uh, learn more about the natural world. Uh, so we do a lot of invasive species removal, especially during the summertime, but then in the spring and fall, we get to do a lot of planting projects. Uh, and in the fall, for a number of years, we've been doing seed collecting, um, partnering with the city of St. Paul, doing collecting at some of the city parks. And then over the years, we've planted a number of pollinator gardens and rain gardens uh, that we'll go to as well to collect uh, the seed from. And normally what we've done is collecting the seed and then kind of creating little seed mixes and spreading it out um, at the sites that we've done a lot of invasive removal throughout the summer. Uh, but for the past couple of years, we've had access to a greenhouse. So we've also started to explore plant propagation. Um, so this will be our third season of being able to grow plants uh, in a greenhouse. So uh, still relatively new to it, uh, but we've been doing a lot of experimenting over the past two years as almost every plant is pretty unique in kind of the methods to be growing them. So uh, we have kind of just what we've learned over the years to share with you tonight. Um, really hope uh, toward the end that we can sort of have a conversation through chat to um, see like what questions people might be coming with. Uh, if there are like specific plants maybe that they've tried uh, and just like what experiences kind of the group has as well. Um, so kind of like how we've gotten here, as Courtney alluded, um, there were some seed saving events and we've been doing a lot of seed collecting uh, throughout the fall. Um, and then we hosted a seed cleaning workshop and have done a lot more seed cleaning um, 
on our own. Uh, in the handout that we've got on seed collecting, there's also a page on some different techniques for seed cleaning and then also for um, seed collecting and then some information that is relevant tonight for seed starting. Um, so when growing uh, native plants from seed, um, we have to do a, a technique called stratification uh, to enable germination to occur. So many of the native plants uh, from Minnesota have evolved over the years to adapt to our harsh cold winters and now need kind of some of the experiences of winter to break them out of dormancy and be able to germinate. Um, so a lot of these techniques that we're going to talk about tonight are trying to replicate things that would happen in nature. So these techniques are really only needed if you are trying to grow these plants at home. Um, and especially if you're growing them like under a green light uh, or a grow light or in a greenhouse. Um, at the very end, we'll talk a little bit about winter sowing. And uh, if you are winter sowing, you might not necessarily need to do all of these techniques, although some of them definitely won't hurt and could give you a little bit of a jump start as well. Um, we, I have gotten a lot of uh, my initial knowledge in this from the Prairie Moon website. They are a seed and plant provider uh, for the Midwest, and they have just an amazing website full of uh, really valuable information. So I'm going to kind of be talking generally tonight uh, in regards to some of the different techniques and what plants require these techniques. Uh, but their website is great where you're able to look it up and they have your specific information for each species of like if you have swamp milkweed what uh, sort of techniques you need to apply um so there will be a couple of different techniques that we'll describe and uh as we go i've got some props in my home set up to kind of show you what it looks like for each of the techniques uh but there are some plants that don't actually really need uh any any uh, pre-work to, to go before they can germinate. Um, and those are mainly for grasses. Uh, a lot of our native grasses and sedges, um, you could just spread and uh, we'll start growing uh, without any sort of pre-work to go with it. So uh, if you have grass seed or sedge seed that you've collected that you would like to grow at home, um, what you can do is kind of just keep it in a, a cool, dark, location uh, over the winter somewhere safe and then whenever you're ready to start growing them just uh, spread them onto your seed tray and we'll we'll talk a little bit about starting them too later but uh, you don't have to really do any work now so just kind of set them aside and you'll deal with them later uh, the next technique is going to apply to a majority of the plants that you're going to be working with and this is called cold moist stratification um, and so the basics of this technique are really trying to replicate what it's like for this plant to go through living in the winter. Um, so you are going to uh, mix the seed with uh, a wet substrate such as sand or vermiculite, and then um, kind of get it all thoroughly mixed up, put it in a bag and put it away in uh, your refrigerator for anywhere from 10 to 90 days and it kind of depends on the type of species uh, but generally like 30 to 60 is kind of the um, average so i'm going to pop out of sharing my screen and share me um, so uh, what does this look like in practice so let's see got a bowl below me uh, and I, in this bowl I've got just um, a bunch of vermiculite. Uh, I've done this technique with both vermiculite and sand. Um, both, uh, both work pretty well. So really whatever you have uh, most easily available is what you'll want to use. So you're going to want to get it nice and wet um, but you don't want it like dripping wet. Uh, this vermiculite can hold a lot of water so just be kind of adding that in as I go, stirring it up and kind of feeling around. Let's 
So with vermiculite, kind of what you're looking for is uh, as you squeeze it, it sort of clumps up. So I'm going to add a little bit more. Um, but you don't really want to see like water dripping out as you do it. Um, same thing with sand. It's going to kind of be the same. So this is clumping up pretty well. Then you're going to get your seed. So for this example, I have some milkweed seed that we've cleaned off all the fluff from. Um, and actually, uh, I'm not going to mix it in here. This big bowl is full of a lot more vermiculite than we're going to need. Um, so you're going to want your Ziploc baggie. Uh, a little pro tip is to label your bag before dumping everything into it. It'll just be a smoother surface. So I'll just do right in. Poke milkweed. And then also the date. So it is 11 and 18 today. I might be wrong, but for this sake, it's general enough. Uh, and then I'm going to go and put some in here. That is about as much. This is probably even more than I'll need for the amount of seed that I've got uh, of the milkweed. Um, and then I'm just going to go add the milkweed into the bag and then just sort of mix it up so that it's getting kind of coated by the wet vermiculite. Mixed in there pretty well. And then seal it up. So uh, when doing this, try to plan it out so that you know uh, kind of when your ideal start date for growing the plants uh, at home in a greenhouse is going to be and kind of work yourself backwards for how long it needs to be in. So I believe, I don't know off the top of my head, but I think most milkweed species were I think around 30 days uh, is what they'll need. So I would want to put this in the fridge. Um, let's see, I'll, I'll probably want to start growing these in the greenhouse in February. So probably January would be a good time. For some plants, it's not going to hurt to do it for too long or like for longer than it, uh, the 30 days or whenever. Um, but some uh, prairie onion is one that comes to mind. Um, let's see, Jack in the Pulpit is one that we're going to talk about later, but that one I've noticed like has germinated in the refrigerator. There are a few that will start germinating even in the fridge where it's a dark kind of cold environment. So just once you put them in there, uh, after they've kind of reached their number of days threshold, so for the milkweed, it'd be 30 days, you'll want to uh, check in on it um, and make sure that it hasn't started germinating in the refrigerator. It's okay if it goes for a little while, but eventually, um, yeah, you're going to want to get it planted into some sort of soil substrate. The next technique is called scarification. So this is kind of like taking what the plant seed experiences to the next level uh, during the winter and really sort of replicating uh, what might happen to the seed as water uh, kind of gets near the seed then freezes and then thaws, kind of scratches up the seed. It scars it uh, in some way and mix it to enable it to uh, further take in water and begin the germination process. Most legume uh, species are the ones that require this sort of technique. Um, so to do this, let me again stop showing my screen. And I apologize, the pictures are covering up all the words. We had switched around sort of the, the view of, um, uh, of the PowerPoint before here at hand, and I think it sort of uh, changed that. Okay. Um, all right. Can, oh. Okay. I think 
Could someone just type in, are you able to see my webcam? Is that what's the main yes. thing my audience view? Yes, we can see it. It looks great. Okay, great. All right, so um, what I've got here is a board that I've glued some rough grit sandpaper. This is 60 grit sandpaper onto here. Um, and then I've got another smaller board that's more handheld, uh, also with the secret sandpaper. Um, and I've spread out on here some uh, purple prairie clover out on here. So let's see how well it kind of shows up. It's sort of blurry. Uh, my webcam's not the greatest. Uh, but this is, it's got sort of like a fuzzy covering on it right now. And then the seed itself is pretty tiny, kind of buried within all of this. So for this method, uh, it takes sort of a bit of practice to sort of figure out the best way to do it, but spread some out, uh, start small, um, and then you're just gonna kind of rub it sort of back and forth. And uh, especially with like the prairie clover where it's got sort of the fuzzy outer layer, this is gonna start just uh, fluffing off all of that fuzzy bit. And you're just kind of go. So the goal is to not like destroy it. You are just sort of gently scratching it. Enough to sort of nick it up, rough it up a little bit. So there are um let's see. Yeah, this is not going to do macro very well. Um, oh, goodness. There we go. So you can see how it's gotten a lot more broken up as we go. Um, and then the seeds are kind of really tiny in within there. And just so that I know that I'm for sure actually scratching it, I'll just kind of keep going for a little bit more. And you're just really gently sort of rubbing it across. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what you're going for. Um, and then uh, most of the seeds that need the scarification will also go through a uh, cold, moist stratification period. So um, if that is the case, what you want to do is do the scarification first, so the roughing it up, and then do the stratification, the cold moist stratification, putting it in with the vermiculite, put it in a bag, uh, and let it rest in the refrigerator for 30 to 60 days, depending on the species. Um, so that is that technique. Next one uh, is double dormancy. So these are ones that um, in the wild could be sitting for two or three years, uh, kind of biding their time, waiting for the most opportune moment. Um, but uh, as a home gardener, you're gonna wanna try and speed that up. So generally they need, I think for a lot of these species, it's about uh, 60 days of cold followed by 60 days of warm, followed by another 60 days of cold, and then you are able to uh, start germinating them. So the two most common species are uh, Jack in the Pulpit or Prairie Wild Rose. Um, there are a number of uh, wild shrubs, um, like berry producing shrubs that also go through this technique. Um, and so how you would do this, is again, same way as the cold moist stratification, use your uh, wet vermiculite, put it in a bag uh, and put it in the refrigerator. Uh, but after those 60 days have gone by, take it out of the refrigerator and just put it somewhere um, room temperature in your house. Uh, although if it's winter, maybe a little slightly above room temperature, a little bit warmer, kind of one around in the high 60, 70 degrees. Uh, but again, kind of in the darkness and let it rest there for another 60 days. And then after that's passed, move it back into the refrigerator for another 60 days. And then at that point, you should be able to pull it out and uh, be able to germinate it. So um, with Jack in the Pulpit, this was one that this year I noticed had germinated well inside the refrigerator. So again, um, 
the 60 day number is kind of a loose number. And so make sure to be checking in on it uh, semi-regularly um, when it's getting close to that, the end of that period, just so in case it does germinate early, you can catch it. Um, this is one to definitely, if you wanna be growing any of these, be mindful of that right now and start getting on, uh, getting that cycle set up now so that you could even potentially be growing this early spring. Uh, this year when we were growing it, it was midsummer when we uh, started planting it uh, and we just had them in trays outdoors and planted them in the fall. Uh, so you could also plan to plant in the fall and then just kind of work with everything all together at the same time in January or February. Uh, another technique is uh, hot water treatment. So this is sort of using hot, hot water, boiling hot water to scarify the seed as opposed to uh, sandpaper. Um, the two most common species that I've come across that require it are New Jersey tea and prairie turnip. Um, and for this technique, what you wanna do is get a pot of, uh, of water boiling. Uh, and once it is boiling, um, have like a glass jar or cup or something, uh, put your seeds in the jar, pour the boiling water over that, and then just let it sit out uh, for the day uh, as the water cools down. Then the next day, empty out the water. Um, and again, these species will then require the cold, moist stratification. Um, and so you'll then do the same thing, mix it with your vermiculite, put it in your bag and put it in the refrigerator for how long you need it. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. And then there are some species that um, just uh, manual methods don't work very well. Uh, and are just best planted outdoors. And so these would be ones that actually are ideal for winter sowing techniques where you're uh, growing them in containers, but you're just letting it, nature's cycles kind of take its place. And the kind of common characteristic I noticed for a lot of these species are their spring bloomers for the most part. Uh, Turtlehead and prairie coreopsis are kind of the weird ones, but a lot of uh, woodland, ephemerals or wildflowers that bloom earlier on and then like prairie smoke and past flower uh, fall under this category. Although we have had success growing prairie smoke and uh, wild geranium in a greenhouse as well. Um, but these are ones where you can just kind of let nature take its course uh, doing the winter sow method and they'll still do pretty well. Um, and that is kind of it for the different stratification techniques. Uh, I'm gonna show kind of some techniques for growing either under a uh, grow light or uh, in a greenhouse if you have access. Um, and talk a little bit about that. So uh, when you are ready to actually start planting your seeds and growing them, uh, what we've done is, and I've learned this actually from Sage Patsy over at uh, the Ramsey Washington Metro Watershed District, they have been growing native plants with elementary school students for a number of years in their classroom. And this is a technique that they've developed that works out really well. So having uh, a flat bottom tray, so there's no kind of individual cells or anything, it's just a tray. Uh, kind of using this to start your plants off on works really well because for a lot of native seeds, their seeds are super tiny or you know, you've know you done your stratification method and so now it's all mixed up with all the vermiculite. It's gonna be really hard to pick out the individual seed and plant them in a cell. So what we do is just get the tray, lay it out, uh, mix the soil with water beforehand. So again, you're getting it um, kind of wet, like how we showed the vermiculite, you want it pretty wet. So when you squeeze it, a little bit of water comes out, um, but you don't want just like standing water in your tray. So mixing, mixing the soil beforehand, uh, again, in like some separate container, getting it nice and wet and mixed up then spreading it out in your tray. This soil is not wet because I'm not going to be planting anything today. I'm upstairs on carpeted, uh, so I don't want to want that to happen, but um lay it all out and then we'll pretend that this is our seed mix that's been 
stratified, just go and sort of gently sprinkle it across. Um, and uh, once you've sort of sprinkled it all over, get it nice all about. Um, follow through, and depending on how big the seed is, uh, you're going to want to cover it up, but uh, to about the depth of the size of the seed. So a number of seeds are pretty tiny, and so just a light dusting of soil on top is really all that's needed. But there are some that are fairly large, uh, and so then you can put a little bit more soil on top. Um, with the soil being all wet already, uh, we don't need to water it or anything. And then we use just a little um, little hothouse uh, plastic tray uh, on top and then let it sit. And usually if you've done the stratification techniques earlier, uh, within a couple of days, you'll start to see um, it germinating. Uh, with the past couple of years that we've done it, we use the um, clear plastic on uh, until after the true leaves start to appear. Um, so it'll develop its cotyledons, kind of a fun little signature shape that then it disregards and starts growing new leaves. Once that happens, we take the tray off. And at this point, uh, if it seems like, you know, we could touch a plant and not just like accidentally crush it by touching it, we'll uh, start removing them and transfer them to uh, some sort of uh, individual cell sort of tray. Um, we used uh, this past year just kind of the traditional depth of the individual cells, uh, but if you can get access to sort of deeper cells, um, that probably is ideal. Uh, a lot of these plants are going to grow really deep roots pretty quickly, and so giving them more room to grow will lead to more success, but uh, we, we grew them in the, the size of uh, cells. And let's see, we started a majority of our plants kind of early February, transferred them late March, mid-March into these. Uh, and then they just sat in these until uh, we started planting in the spring. So plants do all right. We even left a, um, quite a few all season uh, in these and planted them in the fall. They were fairly root bound, but um, kind of break up the roots and they seem to do all right after planting. So that's uh, that's kind of it for um, what I have prepared. It's fairly straightforward, but just helps to kind of see these steps uh, showcased and walked through. Um, I know Don is gonna talk a bit about winter sowing, a, even easier method to grow um, natives from home, and then we'll open it up for questions. Um, basically, with a winter sowing, winter sowing is a wonderful way of being able to take seeds and uh, put together a small little greenhouse, whether you're using takeout containers, using uh, milk jugs. Uh, in my case, uh, we have a lot of salad containers, baby lettuce containers sitting around, um, or we collect oatmeal winter. And what we do is we poke holes in the top, we poke holes in the bottom, and then we fill the container with about two and a half, three inches of soil, as you can see here. And then we label the outside of the container with what's going inside. So this uh, this one says long-headed coneflower, 30-day stratification. Um, in my case, I like to know who, where the seeds came from. And um, then I number my container, um, put the date on the outside, um, what, uh, when they went outside, and then make sure that Inside, there's a label as well. And with this, after you've filled it with soil, you're going to either, um, you're going to moisten the soil. You can either um, soak it, uh, put the container in a tray similar to the one that uh, David showed you that um, he did the flat, that black flat. You can do the same, uh, just fill it with water, set the container inside. Um, then you'll put your seeds on top. 
of the soil and then go ahead and either sprinkle a little bit of soil on top. In some cases, like asters and things that have really super small seeds, you don't even, I with winter sowing, I very rarely put anything on top. I just make sure that the seeds have good contact with the soil. Um, then this will go outside into uh, a space where um, you could place it where they'll end up growing, uh, or you can, place it someplace as long as it will be in contact with the soil, um, the ground, so that it will freeze and thaw in the way that it's supposed to. And then these seeds will um, naturally uh, germinate uh, when they're supposed to. And there's really, if you put them out, uh, most, if you're with native seeds, the longest stratification I've seen um, for most things that we're growing are 90 days. So you, if you put these out in December, uh, when you know that the temps are going to, and the, and the ground temps are going to stay 30 degrees or below, um, then these will, uh, these will stay dormant until they're supposed to. And then uh, the 90 days, whether it's a 30-day stratification or a 90-day stratification, these will germinate when they're supposed to. Any other information, Courtney? That's awesome. Yeah, they can get snowed on, they can get, get rained on, they can uh, handle all the elements and create a right. greenhouse when the air temperature is warming up enough your seeds will germinate. Any tricks in terms of like, once they start germinating, do you need to do anything? Um, this past uh, this past spring, what I noticed was that we warmed up pretty quickly. And so some of uh, the plant, but we warmed up not quickly enough to plant, put them out yet. So what I did was move them to, uh, to my containers and move them to an area that was more shaded because these containers when they start getting when they're in direct sunlight will um will warm up quite quickly and um, when they do warm up you want to pop the top just so that you don't cook your seeds and um and and you don't want these to you don't want them to germinate or or start growing too much before you might have a hard with, before you might have a hard freeze. So you don't want, you don't want a really tall seedling, um, say, you know, um, early in April. Um, so, yeah. And Perfect. you can cool them off too. You can cool them off too by continuing to pile snow on top of them as well. So. Awesome. I've had little sprouts that have gotten snowed on and rained on and they've been just fine. It's kind of amazing. Um, plus they, there's, Whole, whole website that you can go to, the wintersown.org website. Um, and then there's also coming up, we're going to have a whole class um, on sowing seeds outdoors in the winter um, on January 25th. So watch for that as well on the northgardener.org site. Perfect timing okay. for that. I'm going to have David come back and maybe just uh, get rid of the, <laughs> the PowerPoint slides for a minute. Um, and we can go over some questions because there's been some questions in the chat. Um, there's a question about tap water versus distilled water, David. Um, do you use distilled water? Do you just use tap water when you're getting your soil wet? Um, we have just used uh, tap water and haven't had any problems. Uh, in St. Paul, at least, the tap water is working well. Cool. And are there any good resources, charts or spreadsheets or websites that have the timing data for when to do the various processes for different plants? Mm, um, again, Prairie Moon uh, is pretty amazing. Um, they, oh, I'm gonna share my screen again. Um, they don't necessarily have like a timetable, uh, but they do, so, um, 